What's up guys, it's Wilson, also known as Designed by Will, and in today's video we're going to be designing a subsection or sub-collection for my personal brand revision. Now the temporary focus for this video is to show you guys step-by-step -step process on my thinking when designing from um, a point of view of if I was designing for a client rather than designing for myself because most of the videos that you guys see like the designing collection in one hour two hours or something like that those are primarily me designing for myself so I cut a little corners but in terms of this project I want you guys to look at the full process and understanding how I think and how I plan the design all the way from the sketch to the finished product in terms of mock-up ready for print or maybe a mock-up for display after getting the brand name i've moved over into photoshop where i'm working in a resolution of 2.7 or 2700 by 2400 as a, at a resolution of 300 dpi once i got my file set up i'm just copying and pasting directly into photoshop using command c command v and then i'm creating a new layer on top which is where I'm gonna sketch my type. So I'm going for a more playful look, just to spin off how gallery department has their art department and how a lot of people have introduced like running clubs, art departments. I wanted to take a more personal approach to this and incorporate that within revisions and what goes into revisions. So obviously like colors and like design aspects, sizing and all that, that all goes into revisions. And color is probably one of the most important things when it comes to design. So it was all just a good play on words. After getting the base sketch of the design that I wanted, I went ahead and dropped down the opacity of the original text and added a new layer and put my stabilization for my brush all the way to 100. That way I went in with my pencil for my drawing tablet and sort of started creating a sort of type around this sketch. Like I said before, I went for a more playful look, but I wanted it to have a more abstract sort of concept to it. Yet again, just a lot of arty looking stuff, nothing really special. It doesn't really have any initial meaning. I'm just creating one by introducing this sort of playful looking type. After I had my outline done, to bring it to life, I just went in with a paintbrush, uh, not a paintbrush, the paint bucket tool in Photoshop and just filled that in. Additionally, I added a threshold on top so I could get rid of any white spaces that come within the using the paint bucket, sorry, the bucket tool. Um, it's not that consistent. And plus this threshold that I added allowed me to go in with a new brush. Now this is a pressure sensitive brush. Like I said, I am using a drawing tablet. To add a little bit more flair to the typography, I wanted to add some more swirly lines. I just play on those swirly lines going off some of the type and how it looks. This was honestly just to add character. I just felt like it was lacking in something. And like I said before, I'm not taking this too serious because we're trying to bring out an emotion within this design. So after we've got the design ready or how we want the type to look, we just simply gonna take a screenshot of it and drag that screenshot into Illustrator where we're gonna introduce an image trace so we can get a nice clean vector of the hand drawn logo. That way we can scale it, play with it however we want without damaging the actual pixel resolution. Next, we're just gonna add a little sub or byline for our logo. Now, like I said, this is gonna be a subsection of my actual brand revision, and I'm just gonna introduce this sort of blocky basic sans serif type into this more 
very colorful looking and free form looking typography just so it has a sort of heavy contrast you can't mix very script fonts with another script font just doesn't really make any sense um and yeah that's about it that's basically the end of it for the logo in itself now we're just going to introduce some new elements using the same exact techniques we just did before um, starting from photoshop all the way into illustrator so like i said before i'm not going to be introducing any new sort of effects i'm just going to grab a, a copy and just paste this directly into photoshop going with my brush and add the same characteristics that I have on the main logo into this sort of secondary patch logo that I'm going to be using for the jeans. I wanted to do a jean set because I've introduced a new tech back into the Studio World Patreon, where it's primarily just jackets and like some accessories before I update the primary tech pack. And I'm wondering if I should even update the primary tech pack or just introduce a whole entire new tech pack. Let me know down in the comments which you whichever you guys want to go with um it was just easier for me to introduce a new tech pack rather than update the other one plus the other one has over 600 downloads and i can't find any sort of web hosting platform that can accommodate me sending out 600 emails on mass without my account getting deleted for spam so i'm running into a pickle at the moment anyway i'm not doing anything special here i'm just adding the same characteristics on the other one on this logo and I'm taking references from brands like Chrome Hearts and stuff like that because I wanted to create some sort of patchy jean jacket set but not do too much like a low-key set like you could just have this in your wardrobe have it in all day but have some branding that would make people ask questions after we get our icon how we want it to look we're just simply gonna take a screenshot drag that into Illustrator and use the image trace tool again. And we're gonna repeat this one more time to get an element. I was gonna use crosses, but I feel like those were a little bit overplayed or hearts too, they're a little bit overplayed too. So I introduced lips. Lips are kind of overplayed also, but they were in my original drawing for this brand. Um, so I was like, let me reintroduce them into this sort of set. And even before I started drawing the lips, I decided to do a, just a little mini sketch. So I didn't cloud my mind with new ideas of exactly how I wanted to lay out the pants. I just did a little sketch for the front and on the back, that's where primarily I was gonna put the logos. Not do too much with the pants, not do too little, but like I said, have a conversation starter piece or conversation starter graphic for the brand. After we got that, we're gonna do the same process that we did over again, just sketch, fill in, screenshot, and image trace tool. So I'm just gonna skip past this part so we have the core basis of essentially some of the branding that we're gonna be using for the actual set. And after that, we're gonna go into more in depth for the shirt design. So after we got the basis of the design, now it's just time to play with placement so the design looks more fitted towards the garments that we've designed it for. So obviously just taking things like the icon and putting them with other icons so it looks pretty. There's nothing special towards this. I'm just honestly just placing around the logo in different areas so it makes sense towards the actual garment. And I've made just a classic leather patch for like jeans and jean jackets just so it's on brand plus i feel like it adds a little bit of a luxury element towards this sort of garment i'm opening pantone uh, cmyk uncoded because it's just easier once i go to production without having to go back and changing all the colors in illustrator um, if I did want to embroider this stuff, just using the pants and color straight away and going through there rather than getting some sort of custom CMYK is probably the most cost efficient thing that I've started doing recently. But I do tend to forget to do that for the blacks and the grays because I feel like it's not needed. So once we get the final look for our two piece set, we're gonna move on to doing an accessory. Now I just wanted to do a classic scully because I wanted to show you guys how to make a clipping mask in Illustrator. It's probably the easiest way to do that. But then I end up also making 
a sort of ski mask which was in the new tech pack i just wanted to explore the ski mask and yeah so it was just a very simple um remake of the logo so i just went into photoshop use a pixelate uh then pixelated the item in itself after pixelating it i just took a screenshot and then put it into illustrator and then put it onto the mock-up using a sort of rectangular shape to make a space where i could put the pattern the freehand pattern with this rectangular shape i also wanted to introduce the lips in the same way put it into photoshop pixelate take a screenshot then use image trace to turn it into a vector that way i was able to make a pattern using the motifs from the brand onto this garment which is technically what people do when they make these um, beanies they just take their logo and repeat it and i just wanted to do that in a more like classic way for the beanie in itself so it could have some depth and volume because i feel like just having the logo on there is, is cool it looks nice it's a nice logo it fits well with them that with on the garment but i just wanted a bit more after you got your pattern all you want to do is make a duplicate by holding option and dragging up or just mess command c command v over the whole pattern once you've got it grouped i'm going to show you guys quickly how to best make a clipping mask i love you guys have been asking how to utilize a clipping mask for these tech packs so the design is not going anywhere i'm going to show you guys real quick on how to do that so basically you're going to want to drag the pattern underneath the layer that's the color layer then you're going to want to make a duplicate of the color layer now this is going to make sense because in case you don't have like a rectangular background for your pattern you can change the color pretty easily so once you've got that you're going to want to select both the color layer and the layer below which is your pattern and press make clipping mask make sure the color layer is on top of the layer that you're making the clipping mask of and there you have your clipping mask all you have to do is drop the duplicated color layer underneath so you can switch the color all you want that's if you don't have a grouped item like this where you have a background included in it so yeah that's how you do it it's not that hard very simple um and yeah that's how you use a clipping mask and that's gonna be it for this segment so we got our pattern we got our logo we got our design now we're gonna move over to the t-shirt design this is gonna be a more in-depth complicated version since all this was done in illustrator it's a lot easier you don't have much effects the only effects we really applied were image trace tool and then a clipping mask but that's about it now we're gonna move over towards designing the t-shirt. We're gonna be exploring 3D elements, which take a lot of render power. So if your computer can't handle that, you might run into some issues. And we're gonna play around with a lot of gradient maps and stuff like that. We're also gonna try out the camera roll filter in finalizing our design. The first thing we're obviously gonna to wanna to do is open Pinterest and do some research. Now, there's this thing going around where I see on IG and people are literally just cutting out Pinterest posters from like horror movies in the 1930s, 70s, and 80s, and just slapping on different segments of the design and calling it a design and then selling it off to people. That's what I call a Pinterest pirate. Now, there is a better way of doing this, so now you do have creativity where you actually take different elements it's it's necessarily just sourcing images like you would do on unsplash obviously that these images are copyrighted so you might run into some issues but yeah you're basically just sourcing images bringing them together and building a whole new collage now to me that makes sense because now you're introducing a new design from the designs that you've found and everyone knows art is just a way of copying very well but the people who are just taking images cutting them out and putting them randomly in a hoodie and then calling that a design y'all need to stop that bro because i know every single image that you guys cut out and i've seen every single image on pinterest so it's not really creative but the people who do this properly and introduce this into a new collage mr poyo poy poyo poyo he does a really good job of this he he does a really really good job of building new collage of uh, a design so uh he does a good job of what you're meant to do everyone else who's just cutting out images left and right and placing them onto a design onto a hoodie not even adding a brand name nothing just cutting it out and adding it onto a hoodie y'all need to stop 
but that's my little rant for today now without further ado let's get straight into the planning of this i'm gonna do a little sketch of the planning so you guys understand what i'm gonna be doing but i usually do this in my head so basically in the background there's gonna be a world map in between the arms of this mega dev um icon he's gonna be holding little wayne's head when little wayne was younger and basically at the bottom there's gonna be a design in 3d type calling say sorry saying save the youth and then we're gonna add the brand name into the top corner does this all make sense yeah so basically i never show my clients this but this is what i do before i start a client project and this is just planning out the actual layout of the design so yeah that's what i'm doing right now now we've got the plan let's get right into making this look cool the first thing we're going to want to do is cut out little wayne's head while he's not going to be the focal point he's going to be a very important part of this design he's going to add a new way a new place to look at obviously this is little wayne when he was younger and i feel like little wayne is such a cultural icon so that's why i'm using him in this design I'm going to be using the pen tool because I feel like it's the cleanest way to select stuff in Photoshop without having to go back and edit a lot of the mask. After I got my selection, just press Q and I'm going to be going in with a black brush and just cleaning everything up. Once that's done, just press Q to go back into selection and then click the mask tool to create a new mask. And now we're going to repeat that for the mega death skeleton. After we've got our cutouts, we're just going to start building the composition from the sketch. Obviously, like I said, we're going to put his head in between his arms and that's going to be done using um, the clipping mask that we got. Um, not the clipping mask, sorry, the layer masks that we got and using a black brush to cut out sections of the finger to look like to make it look like he's almost holding little Wayne's head. Once all the cutouts are done, I'm just going to open Notion just so I don't get confused and overclouded with ideas. So I stick towards the plan that I had in mind. I also just saw this vintage poster from this band and they have like these lines coming out on the outside. And I'm gonna show you guys how they do that without making it um, too uniform. I feel like if you did this in Illustrator, it would be too uniform. So basically I have the lasso selection tool in Photoshop and I'm holding shift so I can create multiple versions of this. And I'm just going around making some sort of like spiral. Like, you know, when you make a tie dye shirt and it spirals a little bit, that's basically what I'm doing. And it's a little bit tedious, but I feel like it's worth the effect once we start getting everything together. Once you've got all your selections ready, you just wanna to wanna to press G or go to the bucket fill tool and make sure you have a new layer and just fill in that layer to create this sort of effect now i'm going to recreate a little bit of the red spots underneath too so we have some more depth towards the color and now obviously the color theme for this is going to be green and red because we're taking reference we're not taking reference we're actually just copying the um mega death color scheme so just add in those there and now we're going to move into adding the text. So for the text, I'm going to be building it in Illustrator first. And it's just basically just a simple sans serif, nothing too crazy. And just importing that into Photoshop. From there, we're going to go into the 3D options. As soon as you open the 3D options, you'll get this little warning. Say Photoshop is getting rid of the 3D. La, 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 la. Do it then. Photoshop, you've been threatening us for ages and you're going to delete the 3D. Just do it, I'm waiting. But yeah, after you get your text imported and you have your 3D workspace open, make sure you open your 3D workspace. Just go up to Windows workspace then 3D. You just wanna create 3D extrusion from your text. And now we have the basis of the text. We're gonna start working with it. So we make it look like sort of the references that we have in our notion. The first thing I'm gonna do is go down into the 3d path and select the third one because it has this strange bevel but i really like the bevel on the outside it gives like weird look to it and i like it it's better than the basic 3d type that it gives you and you can play with the extrusion to get it how you like and i also turn off the shadows because they cast a shadow on the floor 
and this is really annoying if you forget to do this so go into your lighting and turn off those shadows next we're just going to remove all textures so now we have just the flat color of the actual typography then go back into lighting and basically remove the lighting that we currently have on there and then go new texture or new lighting texture and then set this to whatever dimensions that you have currently on your screen for photoshop so i'm working 2700 by 2000 something so i'm just going to make it 2000 by 2000 after that we're just going to put edit texture then you're going to want to import some sort of gradient or some sort of like interesting texture for the colors so since this is going to be a red and green design i'm going to import a texture that i'm going to add a gradient map that's green so the actual 3d text has some sort of green undertones to it once i make it shiny and everything next you want to go to your textures panel and select the top three of the elements and make sure the metallic is a hundred percent that's going to ensure that your type is as shiny as possible i'm just following the reference that i keep opening it up in notion and then i'm going to go in and adjust sort of some of the areas where we need a little bit more color or sort of highlights so that's going to be past like the front we're going to change the color or the base color to something more light so it stands out a bit more and we're going to be doing this for each section so it looks correct But for the extrusion one, we're going to go in and we're going to add in a green or red, whichever colors that you're accessing. So since I'm going to be putting this at the bottom and we see he's pressing a red button, we're going to add red highlights to everything at the bottom. So it makes more sense in terms of composition. So it only makes sense to add red to the text extrusion because that's where the light's going to be coming from behind. Go back into the 3D panel layer and we're gonna start playing with the roughness. So for the front, we're gonna take the roughness very, very low. Um, and for areas like the extrusion, we're gonna up the roughness. So it's shiny, very shiny at the front, but very it's more dull and distressed towards the back, just so we have the focal point, which is gonna be the front of the type. After that, I usually like to do a little quick test render to see what I can improve, what I have to change. And in this case, it's just the lighting is still a bit too bright. So we're going to go into the lighting section and we're going to adjust that lighting so it's perfect. Now we're just going to go into the environment light um, and we're going to set this to black. So it has more shadows rather than light in itself. Cause I find once you render this stuff out, it's super bright for some reason. I just don't know the physics of 3D elements. So if you make fun of me, that's cool. But change the environment lighting because that's gonna really determine the color of everything. Since it's taking the reference image that we imported as the primary light source, I think it tries to compensate by making it very bright, but we don't want that. So we're just gonna adjust it until we get it right. Just copy my settings if you guys want to, that's fine. This is usually what I have it set to. Um, so once we render it out, it doesn't look too crazy. It looks just fine. So for this test render, I liked how this was turning out, but I just adjusted it a bit more to make it a bit more darker. But even then we go in once we rasterize it with a curve, so we can make it a bit more moody. After that's checked off, I just select the whole thing and render off the whole thing. So everything looks good. Um, this took, I think it was 15 minute render. Just depends on your computer. But like I said, if your computer can't handle Photoshop, it's definitely not gonna handle this. You're gonna run into so much issues. The computer that I had before couldn't do this. Um, so I had to upgrade and it was the biggest headache. It took like 40 minutes to render out like simple type like this. But with this computer, it's like 15, 20 minutes, maybe 10 minutes or five minutes, just depending on how big your actual canvas is and how big your type is. 
So after that was rendered out, I just eyeballed the dimensions of a t-shirt in my head. Um, and you can see me just adjusting it so it looks good because I was working from a rectangle that was um, sideways, but I wanted to make it, oh, sorry, I forgot the <laughs> technical terms. I just want to make it elongated. So I'm actually working the aspect ratio of a t-shirt. Um, and I just copied over those files and put them into this panel. I love that Photoshop has artboards now. This is super amazing and it helps with organization when I'm working on projects. Since this is the primary composition, the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to adjust those squiggly lines coming out like those greens and reds so they fit um, the reference a bit more. And the way we're going to be doing that is we're going to be using a displacement map. And the displacement map that I have now is just one that I've made. So to make a displacement map or Photoshop map, you just, you just need to make a PSD and add a texture into that PSD and just save it as map one, map two. I have all my Photoshop maps in a folder and I just use them all the time. And essentially you just want to repeat this until you get the desired look of the text that you want. And you can even do this by just going to displacement where it just basically repeats the exact displacement that you want. Or you can press displacement map again and select a different displacement map to get the desired look that you need. This is after around six to seven displacement maps on both the green and the red. Um, and yeah, that was the desired look that I was going for. So now we have those accent colors for the shirts that's going to help frame the design that we have in the middle. We're going to start implementing a little bit more elements so it makes more sense towards the sketch. But first, we're just going to add a new layer and we're going to make that a clipping mask onto the 3D text. And then we're going to go in with a colored brush and color in the highlights that I said before from the red on all the text and also on the faces and on the hands of anything around so we can have more depth or more realistic looking design because right now it looks very flat. I'm just using a very soft brush and tapping lightly onto my drawing tablet to make it very, very smooth. Now, if you don't have a drawing tablet, you can just draw it on with a mouse and then go into the layer and play with the, the adjustments or just the opacity so it suits. But right now, you can see me just going in on each part that I would think would have highlights on and just adding it in. And that just adds to the design. Sometimes these elements are not even seen in the final but it's just the time that you take into the design. Like I said before, I'm approaching this from a client design perspective. On different stages of the design, I just like to add like something that will make it look sort of towards the final look. So for instance, I'm gonna group everything and add a curve layer and just deepen all the colors to just see what it's gonna look like in terms of placement just before I start moving into all the heavy graphics and stuff like that. And to me, that's looking okay. But now I know what I need to add. Like it's just still looking a bit more flat. So that's what we're gonna try and attack. I wanted to introduce these elements of playing for some reason, because I want it to look like the world's ending. And that's why the motif also, that's why the words are saying save the youth because the world's gonna end, but we wanna save the kids, la 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 la. Who cares? But anyway, it's just design. <laughs> I'm just joking. But yeah, I try to add in these planes, but they just weren't working for me. Like I put them in the composition and I add everything else and I just ended up getting rid of them. This is a trick that I learned. If you don't want to add a background, but your image still looks like it's floating in the middle of the air, just add a gradient. Um, so we just, not add gradient, add a outer glow. So it looks like it's meant to be there. Um, just copy my settings. So basically I'm just going to play with the spread and play with the noise. So it looks a bit more grunge and suits the rest of the design. Um, and yeah, and I'm going to set the color to red and I'm also going to apply this to the head, um, in the middle, just so we have some sort of cohesion going in between the two elements, because as you can see, this looks flat. It looks like I just put a sticker on top of the design. That's not what we want to do. We want the designs to fit into each other, all the elements to fit into each other. Um, and then. To finish up the composition, we're gonna add in this little vector world map. 
I just searched up Vector World map. I was gonna make one, or I was gonna use Image Trace to make one, but I just seen this one, and it was like a free download off one of those free Vector websites that are probably scamming me out of all my money, but it's okay because we've got the element for the design and we didn't have to spend hours making it. Um, and from there, I'm just gonna apply the same effects we did for the bodies, so just a color fill, but instead of making it red this time, we're gonna make it the same green as we have before, so it looks like a digital world map. Like, you know those Matrix t-shirts that just look sick? That's sort of the look that I wanted to go with in terms of the background. Um, and it's just aesthetic plus in the original poster that we stole the Design from mega death from he's in a sort of control room and there's maps behind him So I wanted to keep that motif going Lastly, we're just gonna add some color and add some more elements like little X's going around the world Like where the bombs are gonna hit when he presses the button or something like that And then we're gonna finally move on to blending but later on, I do feel like the design is a bit flat still. So I add in these star elements that are 3D. So that might confuse you, but just go with the flow. Literally just the same effect, blending options, outer glow, color fill to suit the rest of the elements going on. And that's about it. To me, the text is still looking a bit flat, so I'm gonna go in with the Magnet Lasso Selection tool and just trace the front of these letters. And then I'm gonna go in with a brush using a clipping mask to add in some more reflections so the type looks a bit more shiny slash reflective. We're gonna start adding the effects to make this look more vintage slash washed. The first thing you guys wanna do is make sure everything's grouped in a layer. Then you're gonna wanna add a threshold. Now play with this until the shadows are just completely dark. This is gonna come in important later on because we're gonna be removing the shadows so you can look more vintage. So with vintage t-shirts, the shadows tend to be already faded because they don't really print black. And I recently learned that when I was printing some samples, they printed the black slash shadows and they weren't looking too good. So we had to reprint them um, so it looked better. And those sample videos should be coming out next week. So make sure you subscribed and ready for that. Now, even with this simple threshold, the design is looking a bit more cohesive. It's looking a bit more strong, but we're gonna add in some more things such as textures and stuff like that just so we can make everything blend properly. So we're gonna make a duplicate of the um, layer that we have the design on, and we're gonna just convert that to a smart object. And then we're gonna open the filter gallery, and then we're gonna click the crayon mosaic or whatever. And we're gonna set the top one to around six, seven to 11, and we're gonna set the background level all the way to 15 because we want that to be solid white and that's going to allow us to create some sort of texture onto the design without having to have a physically printed texture and i really love this um sort of texture from this mosaic crayon and i feel like it's very underlooked and when i first found out about it it blew my mind because look at this like that just aged the design 40 years and we didn't have to put any weird textures in but we're still gonna add in more textures like you can never have enough textures we're gonna just import a black texture now you can get textures from anywhere texture labs has some really good textures and i have some textures on my website and we're gonna set it to hard light not screen screen looks really good but it's still looking a bit too flat for me so we're gonna set it to hard light and then we're gonna manually adjust all the little layers inside of hard light not the little layers, sorry. The blending style layers in highlight so we can make our own sort of br blending style. And a lot of people don't know this. And I feel like this levels your design above certain people because now you have something that most people don't use. And it's literally the effects of one, you're one effect away from getting the desired look. And once you can figure it out, it's a very good feeling. So once you've got that on highlight, go to blending options and don't forget to go on layer styles and i'm holding option on mac while you do this and you can adjust sort of um how dark you want or how blended you want the layer to be on top so you can adjust the darkness and stuff like that and i like mine really dark so i keep it 
at this minimal setting and I'm just going in and looking at the texture and it's looking really good but it's not enough so I'm gonna put the original layer on top and then I'm gonna duplicate another layer and we're gonna play with the blending options on that one to screen which I had before and it looked really good but you just gotta play with it I guess you can't really teach people to blend stuff it's just I maybe to someone else this looks too dark but to me this looks perfect Next, you just want to go down and add in a curve underneath all those layers and just bring up this point so there's more grays than black. Plus, this fades out the design a bit more and we're going to add in that color later anyway. So it's fine to play with this curve to get rid of some of those dark points. And I'm, I sound like I'm contradicting myself because I say I want it really dark, but then I want the black to be faded. I guess it's all just a look. But now we've added a black background onto the artboard. You can really see the design is coming together. Like I said before, the design was looking flat. So we wanted to add in some more stars. And this is where I add in the stars. But you see how we did the whole layer styles with the color mosaic stuff like that. The crayon mosaic. We're going to have to scrap that and we're going to have to start it again. But since we got the settings saved, it's not really hard. Um, just to go into filter gallery and add that filter layer in again. With this, I'm just adding some stars around a circle and I'm gonna pick the top five stars because I was gonna go for more like a general look because he's, he's dressed as a general or a captain. So these stars were a good motif to have into the design. Better than the whole planes. Like you saw me get rid of the planes because the planes didn't make any sense. Now with this, we're gonna apply the same 3D effect we applied to the text the only thing that's going to be different is we're going to play with the extrusion and that's about it so i'm going to fast forward this part because we're already pushing like 40 minutes and i apologize if you guys want an in-depth video on just how to make these stars spiral let me know Like I said before, now we, uh, we have our stars implemented, we're gonna have to redo the whole filter gallery thing, and that's very easy to do. But the design is looking more put together now with that new element. So just make sure you convert everything to a smart object once you got it all grouped. And I'm just gonna switch my workspace back to the essentials instead of 3D so it makes more sense. Just simply, do the same thing, duplicate the group, convert it into a smart object. And once you've got that and there's no differences to the actual smart object, because sometimes when you make stuff into a smart object, it, it warps somehow. Go into filter, filter gallery, same exact settings. Nothing changed, everything looks good. Maybe adjust the white point so there's a little bit less shadows, but that's about it. Reapply the blending option to multiply and make sure everything is all clipped back to the folder because sometimes it unclips when you add something in the middle. Turn on all the effects and make sure everything looks good. And you'd think we're done, but we're honestly just getting started. <laughs> After we've got it how we want it in terms 
of looks visually we're gonna finalize it by putting it into the camera raw filter in Photoshop just to blend everything together so to get to the camera roll filter what you're gonna want to do is make sure you group everything every single thing um, make sure you have a duplicate in case you mess up always make a duplicate don't trust smart objects so convert that to a smart object once you have a duplicate make the duplicate a smart object go to filter camera roll filter and it's gonna open this magical plane where people use um, normally to edit photos and make sure everything blends properly what we're going to do is we're just going to take away sort of the imperfection when it comes to the quality of the images. And that's going to be done using some sort of using noise reduction and a little bit of sharpening just to make it look like the design is flat and ready to be printed or it came flat and we scanned it in into Photoshop. I'm just going in and adjusting it to see how it looks. Now, you can't really tell like everything that's being like all the effects that are being made but trust me once you zoom in you can tell the difference between the camera roll and the one that you've actually produced after we've adjusted the details to get it how we want it to look you're going to go into basics and this texture you're going to want to turn this texture all the way down um, and play with the clarity so it's dark but not too dark um, and yeah, the last one is just, I don't really touch it because I guess it's meant for images that look too bad and you want to play with the colors and imperfections and you're playing with color gradients, but we're not doing all that. We're just adjusting it. So the image looks flat and you can just screen copy my settings that I have in there because I keep going back and forth. I can't remember exactly what I did to do it, but as you can see now, the design is one it looks completed as one and basically that's it the design is complete i wanted to try out some color lots because I, I miss playing with color lots but didn't really do much for me um so yeah the design is complete and that's it to finish everything off we're just gonna add it to the tech pack and add it to a mock-up and I'm gonna be creating a physical mock-up. I wish I recorded this process, but I realized I had stopped recording at this point and we're just gonna rate the designs right now. So design one is the logo. From a designer's perspective, this is a horrible logo because it doesn't follow any of the rules. None of the weight makes sense. It just looks cool. That's about it. So from a designer's perspective, the sort of logo, I'll give it a solid, mm, solid five actually. But from a perspective of somebody who's looking at something that looks cool, which is most people who are purchasing from your brand, I'll give it a solid eight. Now for the set in itself, I like how this set looks. It just looks good. And just to let you guys know the tech pack is on Studio World Patreon. So make sure you go check it out. And it's only at Studio World Patreon until I get the update sorted. Now for design two, which was the beanie, which turned into a skull cap. And I forgot to record that section also, but the skull cap looks cool. Um, and the beanie also looks pretty sick. So I give those ones a solid eight out of 10. You can't go wrong with these. They'll look really good when they're printed and they look pretty solid. Now design three, the last design is the shirt. I think this shirt is absolutely crazy. I didn't even expect it to turn out this way. I give this one a solid 10 out of 10. I think this is the first 10 out of 10 YouTube design that I've done in a while. I just like how it looks. The composition is perfect. Everything just fits really nicely. And I put it on this mock-up from um, gallery department. Well, it's not a mock-up, I made the mock-up. And it's basically a t-shirt from gallery department that's cropped to suit the cropped tech pack that I have. And this looks sick, 10 out of 10. I think the introduction of that little stitching, the white label just elevates the design and it makes it look, and it makes it look more luxury compared to just a normal design where there's no tags or anything. And I feel like this is where you would implement the brand name in the most effective way. And I feel like brands like Bape and people like ACW a Cold War, they do this really, really well. Um, I forgot one more other brand, but they have like this orange tag and they put on everything and it looks sick. 
uh, but yeah that's about it i hope you guys enjoy this video it is a long one if you guys made it through the full video like start to finish i appreciate that because yeah i think this would be good background music for designing like if you're working but that's about it i hope you guys have a beautiful day and i love you i'll see you guys next week because we have samples coming in peace